Hello, what's up, and welcome. This is Scott Victor from Blue Fox Creative, and if you want to boost watch time for your YouTube channel, this tutorial is for you. I'm going to discuss open broadcast software, also known as OBS. I will explain best settings for your computer and connection, and how to make your stream match the look and feel of your channel. Woo! This is going to be a fun one. Stay tuned for the details. As you know, you need 4,000 watch hours or 240,000 watch minutes to get your channel monetized. A great way to accomplish this goal is to provide real-time content to your visitors. It makes you more human and accessible to your fans. If you play your cards right, OBS will keep your hey, visitors... Dad, you got some mail. Oh, mail. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks, man. Let's see what we got here. We got some mail. We got some mail. This is a first on the Scott Victor YouTube channel. What do we got? Oh, hey. I got a t-shirt from Angel Dominique. Thank you so much, Angel. I decided to uh, support Angel's channel because she's such a great person. She has a heart of gold, very giving personality. When I met her from um, James Cox's channel, uh, I met her and she was super great. She really was a giving person and a great personality. So I felt that I wanted to support what she was doing. So I bought a t-shirt from her and she sent it over and here we are. Now, in our conversations going back and forth, she uh, mentioned to me that she was actually interested in learning how to configure OBS because it wasn't running really well on her computer. So I am actually making this video for Angel. Thank you, Angel. So I, was, I decided to make the video because I'm sure other people were also interested in understanding how to configure the software to make it run smoothly on specific computers and specific connection speeds. So right now we're going to talk about that. So let's dig into it right now. Making intelligent decisions with your settings means that we should first review some terms that will help you make the best choice for a liquid smooth stream while using OBS. Don't worry, I'm not some nasty professor from uni some university. I'm going to just give it to you straight, no nonsense. Here we go. Okay, the first term that we're going to go over is called video codecs. Basically, video codecs are a compression format that is applied to the video so that when you create a video, it's not like 20 gigs in size, right? It's, it's a fraction of that size so that you can copy it, save it, move it, post it to YouTube, and do all that kind of stuff. YouTube uses a, a codec called VP8. I think there's a VP9 now, which is a uh, open source codec that Google developed that sort of is the go-to codec for YouTube. So uh, there are many, many different kinds. And what OBS refers to this codec as, as the encoder the encoder. So there's a parameter called the encoder and you're selecting a codec. Okay. Output rescale output. Um, what this is referring to is the uh, streaming video size that is modified by your CPU or the brain on your computer. This means a computer power. This means that the power of your computer has an effect on its quality. Um, video rescale output. This is the streaming video size modified by your graphics card, okay? So if you have a really good graphics card, this will benefit you with streaming. Um, after it gets processed by your video card, then it goes back to your CPU and gets processed by that, which is the output rescale output, okay? And we'll, we'll see that parameter when we, di when we dive into the uh, setup. Frames per second, or FPS is as it's referred to. Um, the only thing you really have to know about that is the impact of um, Anything below 30 frames, 30 frames is the, 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 the sort of the default standard for video. Um, if it's below 30, then you start to notice a jittery effect. So that's the trade-off. Um, naturally, if it has a lower frames per second, it requires less processing and it, you can get away with um, uh, lower uh, internet speed, okay? Um, so, but there, the trade-off is that it, the video gets sort of jittery. So the, the sort of, um, the coup de gras of the wicked cool frames, uh, frames per second is 60. And I know that you've seen 60 because sometimes when you watch YouTube videos, you see the logos moving and it's so, so liquid smooth. So 60 frames per second is really what we should be shooting for, assuming that you have the power and the speed. Um, bit rate. Bit rate is the amount of data that can be sent down a wire. Uh, typically, uh, when measuring your internet speed, it is megabits per second, or Mbps, megabits per second. If you measure your, your internet speed and you're at 
kilobytes per second, you're in trouble. I don't think you're going to be able to stream too well. Rate control. This slows down or speeds up your bit rate based upon other parameters that you define. This is best used for gamers and not necessarily video bloggers because in the gaming world, sometimes you're blowing up buildings and cars and flame balls and craziness. And then other times during the game, there's not much movement. So it's sometimes applied to those kind of streams, okay? But for bloggers, it's really not that important. Constant bit rate. This is the opposite of rate control. The bit rate is a constant, okay? And this is what we want to typically use for vloggers. CPU cores. Back in the old days, there was only one core. And if there's only one core, you don't really talk about it, right? But now, now we have CPUs with up to eight cores. That's eight individual brains doing the processing. So if you have a newer, newer computer, you're probably going to do better in this streaming world with OBS because you've got more cores. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Finally, downscale filter. This is a method by which your video picture is smoothed out if the size of the video is not the original size when you create it. So if you make it smaller or bigger, this filter is applied to it, smoothing it out, making it look better. Okay, that's all. Okay, cool. Now we're familiar with some of the terms that you'll have to know when doing, dealing with the settings. Now we need to figure out where you are in regards to your internet speed and how many cores you have on your computer. So let's start with the speed. So all you have to do is go to Google and type in what's my internet speed. Okay, what's my internet speed? And you want to go to speed test by Ookla. And there's many other ones, but this is the one I like the most. It's called speed test, speedtest.net. Click the go button and it runs through the test. Okay, so here are my results. I did speed the video up just to let you know. It does take a little while because you're uploading and downloading data. I get 80.86 megabits per second download and 90 upload. Um, that is on the upper echelon of being a fast connection speed. I have Fi Verizon Fios, which is fiber to the home. It's glass. It, the uh, data is transmitted via light. I'm sure a lot of you already have that. Uh, some people are still using coax, which is the old style, old style where the cable companies would use, uh, I believe it's copper. I think it's copper that's coming in. It's also fast. Sometimes when you use coax, uh, depending on whether everybody else is on that network, it slows down a little bit. Uh, that's not true with fiber. So anyway, the, long, the, the bottom line here is, if you have a slower speed than this, if you're below 20, I would like to know whether or not your streaming is okay, is affected, is jittery, is not jittery, based on the settings that I'm going to explain. So please chime in in comments and let us all know what you're having and let us run this test and tell everybody what you're getting in speed. Everybody wants to know. I want to know. Okay, next step is to find out what CPU chip you have and how many cores you have. In an Apple, it's very easy. You just click the Apple icon in the upper left-hand corner, click about this map. Mac and it will tell you the processor. In my case, I have an older computer, which is an i5. i5s have not five cores, but four. Don't ask me why. Four cores. Uh, anything above four cores, you should be absolutely fine. PC users, I'm doing this from memory. You want to go to the bottom black bar, right click on it, click Task Manager. A little white box will appear. You may have to hit more information. If you don't see a tab called Performance, you want to click More Information. Click the performance tab, and then you will see the chip designation at the top. Um, I will give you a link to show you that procedure from another guy's video if you need help. It'll be in the description. I have assumed that you've already installed OBS. Uh, some of you may have noticed that it will actually conduct a test for you and calculate the best settings based on your connection speed and your CPU usage, which is super, super cool. But for those who have installed it and have not run that test, that's where this video is going to really help you. Okay, open up um, OBS and there we are. Woo! There it is, calculating. Um, go into, on the right hand side, lower right hand corner, click settings. And general, um, the output, you probably are going to want to have the system uh, record the stream onto your computer. You can want to check off automatically record when streaming and keep recording when streaming stops. Also, you're probably going to want to automatically check for updates as well. 
uh, theme, there's different themes. I believe you can actually download more themes. It's a whole other thing. Not going to get into that right now. Not going to get into these other settings right now, but I just wanted to tell you about those real quick. The stream, if you click stream, this is where you designate YouTube as the streaming service. Service stream type, I should say, is custom. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Sorry. Streaming service is what you want, and you want to select YouTube, YouTube Gaming, okay? And now you need to enter the stream key. So go back to YouTube, um, blah, 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 blah. go into um, live streaming, sub choice stream now, and look at the lower bottom of that page, and you will see a encoder setup. You get two fields, a, ser a uh, server URL and a stream name and key. Now, that key is extremely important to keep secret okay do not pass it out to anyone because if you do that person will be able to stream directly to your channel under your name and it has happened and people get totally pirated and their channel goes to go south because some guy decides to do some funky stuff to your channel because you were stupid enough to give them the key do not give them do not give anyone your key do not give anyone your key uh, so copy that key and then you paste it back into OBS right there, all right? Right there. Okay, let's head over to the blood and guts section of this software. It is the output. Make sure that you select advanced so that you see all the controls. And we're going to be talking about streaming. We're not going to be talking about recording uh, files directly to your computer. It doesn't apply. Audio settings, the defaults are fine. And replay buffer, we're not going to talk about that. Streaming is what we're most concerned about here. Audio track parameter. If you are planning to play music over top of your vlog, then you're going to want to choose two audio tracks. One track for your voice, one track for your music. Okay, two. Uh, if you're not planning on doing that, one track is all you need. The encoder parameter. Because we are all going to be doing vlogging, we really only need to select X264 as the encoder, as the codec that the system will be using, okay? Okay, the next parameter is enforce streaming service encoder settings. Enforce streaming service. So what we're doing here, by checking that off, we want to check it off. We are enforcing X264 for the YouTube streaming service. So check that off. Okay, the next parameter, I call them parameters, switches pull downs fields. The next field is a re is the rescale output. This is the size of the video as it leaves your computer and is shot down the wire for someone to see it. Now, a lot of people fall in love with the super high resolution, so they'll check off the box and they'll select 1080 by 1920 or 864, you know, or 810. So 1080 is 1080p, that's about the highest you can go. The problem with that setting, you may have enough speed and enough uh, computing power to do this but people with cell phones cannot easily digest that kind of a volume of data. So, for most people, on most systems with an average connection speed, 1280 by 720, 720p, is good enough, it still looks great, it's good enough, it'll be smooth for everybody, it'll work on mobile, thumbs up, select 720p. Okay, let's talk about bit rate, kilobytes per second, and all that cool stuff. Rate control, we want to make, we want the, uh, the amount of bits that will be sent down the wire as a constant. We don't want to make a variable. We're just vlogging, we're not gaming. So we want CBR. Now the bit rate has a, a specific relationship to the frames per second. So uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to recommend that we use 30 frames per second because that will work for the majority of people with their connections and their power. So if we head over to YouTube and look at what they recommend for that setting, we have 720p, um, and they are recommending, um, as you can see, 60 frames per second. They're looking at 2,250 to 6,000 kilobytes per second, and 30, which is below, would be 1,500 to 4,000. So um, I would recommend you plug in 4,000 kilobytes per second. That's the top echelon for that setting. If you have more power, you can go with 60 frames per second and choose 6,000. But for most people, 4,000 would be best. So 4,000 goes in there, and we are done. Okay, the next setting is something called Use Custom Buffer Size. When you check it off, it gives you some options here. What this is designed to do is help people with extremely slow computers. Basically, it stores the data in, in a sort of cache and spits it out at an even rate when you check that off. It really isn't applicable for most people, so you don't have to click it. Just unclick it and move on.
Okay, let's talk about the CPU usage preset. This is a little bit tricky. The bottom line is the higher the selection, okay, the less time is spent on in um, conditioning the stream to look nice. So if you select ultra fast, the system really won't do much to the video and it's gonna look like garbage when shot down the wire. If you go down to very slow or even placebo, which doesn't really exist, very slow, that means it's really processing the video so that the quality of the video is super great, but the CPU usage is extremely high. So you're gonna, your, your motherboard's gonna get really hot. So what is the best balance? Either you wanna go with faster or very fast, okay? So if you have a good chip, you could probably put it at faster, maybe even fast. But for people like chips like mine, I have an i5, faster or very fast. I'm going with very fast. Okay, let's pop out of a video real quick. Um, your base canvas resolution, that should be uh, you know 1080p. So select uh, 1920 by 1080. Your output scaled, scaled resolution, this should be 1280 by 720. This is what you should select unless, you're, unless your computer is a you know, a Cray supercomputer, right? Uh, 720p is what you want there. Down scale, scale filter. Uh, you know, the difference between these three really aren't that great, and I don't know that it really has an impact on your CPU speed or anything like that. I, you know, some people say uh, the one, the, what's this, the Lanzos uh, is like, what does, is better at sharpening. I go with bicubic, you know, it doesn't really make much of a difference. And of course, your, uh, your frames per second, I've got set to 30. Hit OK. OK, the next step is to select audio and go into your auxiliary audio device and select your microphone used to record your voice. In my case, I'm using the iMic USB audio system. It's already selected, just hit OK. For me, I'll just hit OK. And that is it. Now remember, these are the lowest denominator settings. This will work for just about everybody's situation, no matter what their computer they're using, and no matter what internet connection they're using. If you feel you, if you have like an i7 and you have a super fast internet connection, you probably are gonna wanna try 60 frames a second. If that's the case, make sure that you go into the bit rate and increase it to 6,000 per YouTube's recommendations. This is Scott Fichter from Blue Fox Creative, and the next segment that you're going to see is how to manipulate this program to reflect the look and feel of your YouTube channel. We're going to talk about scenes and graphics and adding music and making it really juicy. In fact, this program it will actually work for Google Hangouts as well. And when you really master this thing, it really makes your channel look super sexy. So, again, this is Scott from Blue Fox Creative. Thanks for stopping in. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up and make some comments below if you have any questions i will absolutely answer them thank you very very much for stopping by this is scott from blue fox creative take care